What is up guys, it's Arnek and welcome back. Extrusion. Ever heard of it? Honestly, I just recently found out about this effect, or this function roller. And man, I love this. There are so many projects I could have used this already. So without any further ado, roll the intro. Let's see what we can get done with this new tool. Well, that's not new, but new to me. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so for now, let's create a circle. Align it to the center and call it, I don't know, value one or something. Next, add a trim pass and set the end to something maybe around 30% seems good to me. Add a keyframe, move it down to about one second and set the initial end back to zero. Okay, so next up, Duplicate the layer with Ctrl or Command D, navigate all the way into the trim path, and change the end percentage. Something around 15% is fine. However, we currently can't see the result, so let's change the color to see what actually is going on. As you can see, the new layer starts at the top, but we really want to move it over to the end of the first layer here. So how do we do that? Well, that's where the offset part of trim path comes in. The offset has to be set in a way to lie right where the end of layer 1 is, if that makes sense. We could just enter the correct amount and make it static, but that's not really how we roll. So instead, Alt or Option click the stopwatch icon for offset to type in an expression. Because we are working with degrees for offset, as well as percent for the end value, we have to turn the end percentage into degrees. So for the expression type the following. 360 for one whole rotation, divided by 100 to get 1%, and then multiply that by the end percentage of value 1. But don't just type it, pick with the value instead. That way, whenever we change the initial trimming, we don't have to dive in there and change the offset again. Now just repeat that process as many times as you need to fill up the circle. Finally, we get to the point of extruding our shapes. So start things off with turning the layers into 3D objects by clicking in these boxes. Remember, if you can't see this option, just hit F4 on your keyboard to toggle between the modes. Your shape layers are now 3D objects. Yay! Congrats! But if we rotate it, it's still flat, which makes it hard to use as an actual 3D object, right? This leads us to the extrusion part, so let's get to it. Toggle down the layer settings and you will see a few new options down here. However, right now we cannot work with it. That is because we have to change the internal renderer as After Effects already is telling us. So either click here or you can also use this button. Both will bring you to the same setting. In the new window, in the dropdown, change 3D renderer to Cinema 4D. After Effects will tell you which functions are enabled as well as disabled by doing that. But that's not of any concern right now, so hit OK. Now you can go into the geometry options where you have the setting for extrusion depth. This is the amount at which your shape layer will extend into the Z axis. As our stroke is 30 pixels, let's set the depth to 30 as well, to get a nice square-like shape. Already you can see that the object was transformed, but it doesn't quite work as it is hard to tell where the shape ends and the sides begin. But no worries, we can change that. Go into your layer's contents and click on Add. Since now we use the Cinema 4D renderer, we have a couple of new options to choose from. Within these, there are even more options, which I recommend to play around with to see what you can do with them. For now, we only need to work with simple color. You can click it, just to find out it doesn't work. After Effects tells you that you have to apply this to a group and suggests to create a new empty group moving the shape into that group, and then apply any of the options. But that's quite annoying to me, as I always try to keep the necessary steps to reach your goal as minimal as possible. So instead of doing as you're told, simply highlight the shape itself, in our case it's ellipse 1, and do the same again. Choose side and color, and adjust the color to better represent a shaded version of the main color on top. Alright, that already looks quite a bit better. Now let's repeat that process for the other layers as well. Nice. We're getting there, guys. But it feels a little bit too simple, so how about changing up the thickness of the separate elements? 
just highlight the layer of choice and change the stroke width as well as the extrusion depth accordingly. And finally we got it. Great, isn't it? I actually can't believe how easy it is to create simple 3D structures inside of After Effects. And there are so many ways to use it. I mean, infographics, pseudo 3D spaces, and the list goes on. So what are you waiting for? Get cracking, get creative, and put your work out there. I'm really interested to see what you can come up with. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to smash that like button, subscribe if you aren't already, and ring the bell to be notified of once again, and ring the bell to be notified about future videos. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!